The GP38-2 series of locomotives were some of EMD's most successful designs. Produced from the 1970s to the mid-1980s, the GP38-2 and GP50 were quickly found in many different tasks of the railroad. From switching to pulling high-priority freight trains across the country, these versatile locomotives could be seen all over North America. Many of these locomotives are now being rebuilt with ecologically sound emission control for higher population centers. A new era emerges as technology meets proven reliability for these EMD products. The SD38-2, SD40-2, and SD45-2 were introduced in 1972 as replacements for the SD38, the SD40, and the SD45. They retained the same respective horsepower ratings, but received a host of mechanical and electrical upgrades, with the most visible difference being the longer frame with the HTC truck. While the SD38-2 and SD45-2 were relatively slow sellers and ceased production in the 1970s, thousands of SD40-2 variations were built as it became the most popular locomotive of the late 20th century with peak production in the late 1970s and the last variant, the full cowl SD40-2F, built for the Canadian Pacific in 1988. From the time that the first road switcher was introduced in the 1940s, the high short hood was a feature found on most first generation diesels. The high nose provided space for sandboxes, toilets, and steam generators that heated passenger trains. Some railroads chose to run their high hoods short hood forward while others ran them long hood forward. Of those railroads that ran their high hoods long hood forward, they often did so by request of the crews. The crews you ask? Yes, the crews. Coming straight out of the steam era, many crews wanted the additional feeling of safety of having the longer hood out in front just like it was on steam engines, so that's how it was. By the early 1960s, the low nose design was king, but a few railroads stuck with the high hood configuration. The Norfolk and Western and the Southern Railway are among the last roads that ordered the high hoods and took delivery of high short hoods all the way into the early 1980s. With that in perspective, it should come as no surprise that the only high hoods still operating on a Class 1 railroad in North America today are those that are still on the Norfolk Southern. The NS is a combination of the N&W and the Southern in case you're not hip to 21st century railroads. 
NS's high hood fleet remained steady as she goes for years, but over the last few years, an aggressive and intensified push by NS to modernize its EMD units with new Admiral cabs has rapidly reduced the ranks of these four-axle misfits. Moreover, following the replacement by modernized mother slug sets at major switching yards and terminals, some 50 high hood GP38-2s were sold in late 2016 with more than 70 that were set to be auctioned off in August of 2017, which further thinned out their ranks. Locomotive number 4561 is an AC44C6M that was rebuilt from the Dash 944CW number 9341 at the Wabtec Locomotive Facility in Fort Worth, Texas in March of 2022. Union Pacific number 6473 is what the railroad classifies as a C44ACM. The UP has plans to rebuild 1,000 older GE locomotives into these C44 ACMs, installing the latest generation AC traction control systems, locomotive operating systems, electronic air brakes, and distributed power. Union Pacific is one of the latest railroads to begin rebuilding its older General Electric locomotive fleet with the builder. The railroad has selected 20 C6044 ACs for the program with the rebuilds taking place at GE's Erie, Pennsylvania and Fort Worth, Texas facilities. The biggest change on a locomotive will be the upgraded control system and wiring. The units will receive consolidated control architecture which integrates the control of various functions of the locomotive and runs the Evolution Series control system. The first C6044 AC to be upgraded was UP number 7342 which was delivered to GE's Erie facility in late 2017. 
while GE's model designation for the rebuilt locomotives is AC400 CWM, Union Pacific uses the C44 ACM as the model designation. To date, BNSF Railway, Canadian Pacific, CSX Transportation, and Norfolk Southern have had older locomotives upgraded with consolidated control architecture by the builder. Union Pacific also has plans to rebuild 75 of their Dash 9 locomotives into AC locomotives, also designated as AC44C6Ms as part of a large order to rebuild much of their GE locomotive fleet, Union Pacific is a major customer of the similar AC4400CWM rebuild program. All of these locomotives are similar to the C60AC, including convertibles and C44AC rebuilds. All of the rebuilds, like the 6473, use UP's new paint scheme that was introduced in late 2022. Number 1838 is one of EMD's entries into the rebuild revolution. In addition to the SD70 ACU and numerous eco-rebuilding projects, this SD70 ACC is rebuilt from an SD70. Number 9825 is one of the last of the remaining Dash 944 CWs on the Norfolk Southern. It's biding its time until it will be rebuilt into an AC44C6M, just like the 4561 leading this train. Number 8071 is a GE ES44 AC that likes to show up a lot in the region. It showed up and paired up with another UP visitor, SD70M number 4500, along with a pair of NS SD80 Max back around 2016. We caught up with the 8071 again at Taylor Yard while it was third of four GEs on another southbound Train 11Z. The 8071 seems to have a penchant for southbounds and Taylor Yard. On a hot and balmy Sunday back around 2019, the 8071 rests on the ready track number 5 while the Train 11Z, being settled with the setup work during this time, does its business on Yard Track 4, setting out today's intermodal. Another locomotive 8071 that did its time at Taylor Yard was the Canadian Pacific AC4400 CWM. A rebuilt GE in the same vein as the NSAC44 C6M number 4561 and the UPC44 ACM number 6473 that we just talked about. It's shown here knuckled to another CPAC diesel in the last days of winter on March 15, 2020. Electromotive Division produced the GP38 from January 1966 to December 1971. During that time, 733 units were built for railroads in the United States, having 706, Canada having 21, and Mexico having 6. GP38-2 number 5669 is the star of this lineup. It was built as a Southern Railway Jeep in 1971 and once formally numbered as the NS2860. Today, it's one of the highest numbered GP38s on the NS system with only the 5670, the 5671, the 5672, and the 5673 above it. 
It also sports the first-generation Operation Lifesaver paint scheme found only on a handful of NS locomotives. Although seemingly firmly situated around the Binghamton, New York environ, the exotic Jeep could be found almost anywhere and even did time at Steamtown. There she is again, way down there waiting for a signal at the control point BD. Conrail never had many quirky paint schemes, but they did contribute a couple of funky GP38s. The first was Conrail number 7776, which was painted in a special bicentennial paint scheme for 1976, which was also its birth year. It's seen here, in of all places, Freedom, Pennsylvania, on September 9 of that year. Norfolk Southern GP38 number 2943 was originally the Conrail number 7899 and was part of a group of rebuilt NSGP38s that were repainted into Conrail paint for Conrail shared assets operations. Special 25th anniversary decals were applied by the engine house staff at the Camden, New Jersey Pavonia Diesel Shop to mark Conrail's 25th anniversary in 2001. Norfolk Southern number 5642 features the railroad's eye-catching training first responder scheme. The unit was built as the Penn Central GP38 number 7868 in January of 1971. The four-axle road unit retained its road number when it went into Conrail in 1976. In the early 1990s, the GP38 was repainted in a special scheme for Conrail's Philadelphia division. Norfolk Southern acquired the GP38 when Conrail's assets were split between the NS and CSX in the late 1990s. The railroad renumbered the locomotive 2923. The 2923 was one of 73 former GP38s and GP38 ACs that were rebuilt to GP38-2 standards at NS's Juniata Locomotive Shop in Altoona, Pennsylvania between January of 2005 and June of 2007. The rebuilt units became part of Norfolk Southern's 5601 through 5673 number series. The 2923 was rebuilt in May of 2006. Among the upgrades made during the rebuild included a rooftop air conditioner, extended range dynamic brakes, cab signals, and locomotive speed limiters. The rebuilt locomotive also received a new cab and short hood, but the long hood was retained. During the rebuild, the 2923 was renumbered to 5642 and painted in the railroad's thoroughbred paint scheme. The training first responder scheme was applied in November of 2015. The Reading and Northern, formerly the Reading Blue Mountain and Northern Railroad, painted GP38-2 number 2023 to commemorate the railroad's 40th anniversary. The RNN began as the Blue Mountain and Reading in 1983, operating a 13-mile former Conrail branch and has grown into a 400-mile route with some 300 employees and a passenger excursion operation featuring former Reading Company 484 number 2102. The anniversary diesel was built as Conrail number 8214 and became the Norfolk Southern's number 5359 when Conrail was divided between NS and CSX. Sold off in 2020, it became the RNN's number 2016 before receiving its current paint scheme and number.
The first prototype GP30 was built in 1961. It retained the turbocharged 16-cylinder 567 series engine of the GP20, uprated from 2,000 to 2,250 horsepower, and was initially known as the GP22, following EMD's short-lived tradition of linking the model name to the locomotive horsepower. After a number of design changes from this initial demonstrator, including the addition of several features that would be carried through to subsequent models, the name was changed to the GP30 and it entered regular production in 1962. The name change was partly a marketing response to competition from the 2400 horsepower Alco RS27 and the 2500 horsepower GEU 25B, both of which had a horsepower and a model name advantage, and both who were still in bed with each other at that time. The GP30 marked the first significant departure from the utilitarian car body design introduced by the GP7 and carried through to the GP20. The addition of an inertial air intake system behind the cab, along with a renewed emphasis on appearance, resulted in a restyled car body with a raised fairing extending from the cab roof to the middle of the long hood. With the inertial air intake occupying the front of the hood, the radiators were combined into a single section at the rear of the hood, with two 48-inch fans flanking a single 36-inch fan. In combination with EMD's signature swing hanger Blomberg-style trucks, the car body of the GP30 makes it unlikely to be confused with anything else. Railroads that operated the GP30 were the Chesapeake and Ohio, the Burlington Route, the Chicago and Northwestern, the Denver and Rio Grande Western, the Great Northern, the Louisville and Nashville, the Milwaukee Road, the Pennsylvania, the Santa Fe, the Seaboard Airline, the Cotton Belt, the Sioux Line, the Southern, the Southern Pacific, and the Union Pacific. And last but not least, even the original Philadelphia and Reading embraced the muscular Jeep. If you look hard enough, you can still find GP30s in service on short lines and tourist railroads all around America. Even the giant CSX uses GP30 car bodies as slug units, or at least it did before PSR. GP38-2 number 2011 is an ex-Norfolk Southern High Hood that was purchased from NS during its GP38-2 purge of 2017. RNN has acquired a mini armada of the ex-Southern High Hoods and even some rebuilt Admiral cabs since 2017 and reconfigured all with low short hoods and gave some fresh green and yellow paint. 
The first three volunteers were numbered 2010, 2011, and 2012, with another three acquired a year or two later that were numbered 5672, 5603, and the third unit. I'm assuming that the second batch was renumbered 2013, 2014, and 2015. If I'm right, that means that a third wave of thoroughbred Jeeps was acquired as shown by the 2017 Posing in the Yard of Cressona, Pennsylvania. RNN's locomotive ambitions didn't stop with the four axles. Six axles in the form of SD40-2s, some also with admiral cabs like the 3059 show here under the dreary gray skies of Tamaqua, have been showing up all over the system. The GP40 was introduced in 1966 as an evolution of the GP35. Along with the GP38 and similar SD series units, it marked the introduction of EMD 645 series engine, which used the same engine block dimensions as the 567 series, but incorporated modified power assemblies with a larger cylinder bore. In the GP40, a 16-cylinder turbocharged version of the engine produced 3,000 horsepower. The GP40 also used an alternator rectifier electrical system addressing one of the biggest reliability concerns of the GP35, in which the DC generator required 16 stages of transition to handle a 2500 horsepower output. The GP38 was a 16-cylinder, non-turbocharged, roots-blown model that produced 2000 horsepower, initially using a DC generator and later in the GP38 AC, using the same AR-10 alternator as the GP40. Both the GP38 and GP40 were fairly strong sellers, together accounting for more than 2,000 locomotives built. In 1972, 
EMD introduced an updated Dash 2 series replacing the GP38 and GP40 with the GP38-2 and the GP40-2. Many GP38s and GP38ACs remained in service with their original owners or successors well into the 21st century. GP40s in their original form started to disappear from Class 1 railroads in the 1990s, but many were rebuilt or continued in service on smaller roads. A fairly large number of GP38s and GP40s have received upgraded Dash 2 modular or Dash 3 microprocessor electrical systems, and a number of GP40s have been converted to GP38 variations by the replacement of the turbocharger with a roots blower. The GP38-2 retained the same 2000 horsepower 645 series engine of the original GP38 but received a host of mechanical and electrical upgrades geared at improving reliability and ease of maintenance. Production continued until the end of 1986 at which point no direct replacement model was introduced. The GP38-2 retained the same general appearance as the GP38 with four axles two 48-inch radiator fans, and two exhaust stacks. The paper air filter housing created a raised box on the hood roof line ahead of the exhaust stacks. Early in GP38-2 production, the radiator intakes were shortened and the fans moved closer together. Thanks to their reliability and versatility, the vast majority of GP38-2s have remained in service for more than 45 years after entering production and dozens of GP35s, GP40s, and GP50s have been rebuilt to GP38-2 or GP38-3 specifications. The Dash 2 line saw some 40 improvements to the original GP38, such as a redesigned, non-turbo, 16-cylinder, two-cycle model, 645E prime mover, and a new solid-state electrical cabinet, among other things. In all, more than 2,200 GP38-2s were built for 59 customers in the United States, Mexico, and Canada. And many are still serving the rail industry to this day. Even though EMD first introduced the GP38-2 in 1972, this diesel-electric story actually begins back in the mid-1960s. It was during this period that railroads were replacing their aging fleet of first-generation diesels in mainline service with fewer but larger and more powerful units. However, these 3,000 to 3,600 horsepower monsters were unsuitable for use on many secondary jobs for which the earlier F units and GP7 and 9s were well suited. This need for more versatile motive power led to EMD's introduction of the GP38 in January 1966. 
These four-axle 2,000-horsepower Jeeps were more in line with their older brethren and quickly became a common sight on branch lines and in yards on many post-1960s North American railroads. By the early 1970s, many first-generation diesels were reaching the end of their service lives. The most common replacement locomotive became the GP38-2. EMD began production of the 16-cylinder, non-turbocharged, 2,000-horsepower locomotive in 1972. But unlike the GP38's prime mover, which drove a generator to supply power to the traction motors, the GP38-2's prime mover drove an alternator which produced AC electrical current that was rectified to DC to power the four traction motors. Another major change for the GP38-2 was the introduction of the Dash 2 modular electrical cabinet. For more than 40 years, the GP38-2 has worked mainline freights, locals, switching jobs, yard service, helpers, snow fighting trains, and even hump power. With the unveiling of the Dash 2 line six years later, EMD had made some 40 improvements to its modern Jeep. A few of the more major internal changes included a redesigned, non-turbo, 16-cylinder, two-cycle model 640E prime mover and a new solid-state electrical cabinet, which was not only modular in design to aid in quick repairs, but also fully sealed and pressurized in an effort to keep dirt and debris out of the system. With these new designs, the 2,000-horsepower GP38-2 proved to be a very reliable locomotive. Weighing in at a nominal 269,500 pounds, these Dash 2 variants were outfitted with four General Motors model D77 traction motors, AR10 generator, D14 alternator, and could be optionally equipped with dynamic brakes. With a truck gear ratio of 62 to 5, the Jeep could attain maximum speeds of 65 miles per hour and had a starting tractive effort of 61,000 pounds and a continuous tractive effort of 54,700 pounds at 11.1 .1 miles per hour. Externally, the Dash 2 changes were much more subtle, but there are some noticeable differences between the GP38-2 and EMD's earlier produced GP38. These included the addition of a water level sight glass on one of the right side doors on the long hood, the access doors to the battery compartment located just ahead of and below the cab on each side are bolted on rather than outfitted with latches and hinges, and many GP38-2s were equipped with the optional Blomberg M trucks distinguishable by their dampening strut and single brake cylinder. Unfortunately, these characteristics are only a guide and are not absolute. The most reliable attribute, the sight glass, is reportedly absent on some Dash 2s, Burlington Northern specified hinged battery box doors on its units, and hundreds of GP38-2s rode on conventional Blomberg trucks obtained from traded-in first-generation EMD locomotives. So, if you are concerned about the external accuracy of a particular road's GP38-2 in scale model form, you'll definitely want to consult the prototype photos. Between January 1972 and July 1986, EMD built more than 2,200 GP38-2s for 59 customers in the United States, Mexico, and Canada. Some of the many original owners of this locomotive included Lehigh Valley, Canadian Pacific, Missouri Pacific, Chicago and Northwestern, Seaboard Coastline, Penn Central, Louisville and Nashville, Clinchfield, Southern Railway, Burlington Northern, Vermont Railway, Kansas City Southern, Canadian National, Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, and Nationalist New Mexico, who along with the Southern Railway, owned high short hood units. The blue and gray lightning stripe livery of the Delaware and Hudson was a rail fan favorite. Today, I don't know if any still exist, but if they do, they soon too will be covered in Canadian Pacific's bright red paint, or they'll disappear off the locomotive roster entirely. Number 7303 rests at the Taylor Yard just two days before the Norfolk Southern takeover of the yard and the line. The Southern Railway was one of two railroads that ordered high hood GP38-2s. The other was the Nationalist de Mexico, as I mentioned earlier. Norfolk Southern inherited all of the ex-Southern Jeeps and has been systematically rebuilding them with low, short hoods. Take note, in keeping with Southern tradition, 
its Jeeps were geared to run long hood forward. Two Canadian Pacific GP38-2s run light to rescue a disabled train 458 on May 28, 2015. Like most of EMD's offerings, the GP38 had a six axle variant such as the Reading and Northern 2003 shown working Taylor Yard on November 30, 2015. 2003 is also notable as once having an elaborate 20th anniversary paint scheme back in 2003, hence the locomotive number. EMD's SD38 made a name for itself in heavy drag freights and busy hump yards from the hills of Minnesota to the sprawling yards of the Northeast. And though production numbers were small compared to their similar SD40, many of these locomotives would change hands several times over their long careers, some of which continue on to this day. The SD38-2 and the SD40-2 were very similar externally, with their relatively long frame and short hood resulting in the large porches at either end. The SD38-2 had two radiator fans and two exhaust stacks, while the SD40-2 had three radiator fans and a single turbocharger exhaust stack that was changed to a flat silencer housing on later units. The SD38 used a 2,000 horsepower roots blown engine that replaced the SD28. The SD38 initially used a DC generator but later in the SD38 AC used the same AR10 alternator as the SD40. From 2004 to 2007, Norfolk Southern rebuilt 37 former Southern Railway GP50 units into GP38-3s. The 3,500 horsepower 16-cylinder turbocharged 645F engine was derated to a 2,000 horsepower roots blown 645E, which resulted in the removal of the middle radiator fan, the installation of a paper air filter box, and the replacement of the exhaust silencer with two exhaust stacks. Aside from these modifications, the original long hood of the GP50 was retained largely as is. While mechanically similar to a standard GP38-2, the units retained the Super Series wheel slip control system of the GP50. The original high short hood was replaced with an 81 inch low short hood, the same length as the high hood but shorter than the 88 inch low hood used on the other GP50s as built. The original EMD handbrake was replaced with the Graham White 393 series handbrake and an all new cab and sub base installed. The cab was built to the general design and dimensions of the EMD standard cab with a flat panel under the headlight as on earlier EMD units and a welded rectangular side panel as on late dash 2 and later units. The sub base and battery box doors, the notch for the handbrake and a few other minor details differed from the EMD built versions. During the cab conversion, the units were changed from long hood forward to short hood forward operation. There are maybe 10 or so high hood SD40s that are still on NS and I do mean maybe, so if you're looking to catch any of these 4 or 6 axle blacks before they're sold off or rebuilt, you'd better do it fast. Time is short for these 20th century survivors if you want to see them in their original form and in action.